Hello and welcome to The Strong and the Geek, your weekly update on all things nerd culture, pop culture, culture club. What what is culture club? You said that last week too. They're the the guys who do the the you spin my right round, baby, right round. Is that the like name of the band? Record, culture baby, club? Right round, 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 yeah. Oh. We've never actually talked about them at all, but one of these days we will. Yeah. By okay. the way, if I'm if I'm incorrect and that's actually by a different band that song, then you can you all can just quit listening to our show and I'm just. Is culture? Sure. It would be funny if Culture Club is named like a band. Yeah, that's <laughs> just a thing or you made nothing. up. Yeah, I just made it up. Um, oh, also happy <laughs> Mother's Day, Culture Club. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yes, Happy Mother's Day. Um, We're not exactly sure how many mothers listen to our show, but. Happy Mother's Day, I bet, mothers. I bet the ones that do are some bad mothers. Oh, bad mother, mother, mothers. <laughs> um, you are? I am Ben Ramirez. And tonight? <laughs> and tonight, I am uh, here with my special guest. Not Bill Cosby. Not, oh, Jesus. I hope it's not Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it certainly is not. Because if it was... Look out for that beer you got there, my friend. I'm sorry. Watch out what's in it. I thought I had a different special guest this week, and I couldn't remember who it was. No, well, you need to talk to your agent about which not person do we have on the show. We have a very exciting show for you tonight, because this week we were blessed by Marvel Entertainment's Captain America Civil War. So we'll be going... A.K.A. Avengers Part 3. Avengers 3. Um, so we very much will be dissecting that as our main topic tonight. But Spoilers be ahead. Be Fair warned. warning. So if you don't want to listen to the show until after you've seen the film, um, fuck you. Yeah, but, listen to the fucking show. <laughs> but but that's okay. But first, <laughs> don't I... Don't be such a mother about it. I thought, oh, mother? Speaking of mothers, I think there was something that you wanted to introduce us to to start the show off tonight. Yeah, I came across a, a game online... Uh, in honor of Mother's Day. Yeah, and in honor of Mother's Day. It's a Google autofill game popularized by uh, the Super Carlin Brothers. Shout out to you guys. I love your channel. I uh, thought we'd give it a try with is, uh, Mother... Er, <coughs> excuse me. So the way it works is we type a question into Google. In this case, we'll just put is mother and then the letter A, B, C, D, etc. And we will let Google tell us what is mother... And then we will try to answer the question that is presented by is mother, whatever the letter might be. Fair enough. Let's see how this goes. All right. We'll start off with the letter A. Is mother a, is mother a proper noun? Uh, no. I do believe that is mother is not a proper noun. Fair enough. All right. I'll answer this next one. <laughs> is mother base outer heaven? Um, outer haven. Well, even though you're solid, Mother Base is part is well becomes Outer Haven. I'm pretty sure. So that's kind of a nerd question. So all oh, right, very I, good. I thought is Mother Base Outer Haven just sounded like the computer had a stroke. I think I think that's a that's, Metal Gear. That's thing. just a lot of things. Right. Is Mother capitalized? Uh, I'm not. I think it's dependent on the usage of the word Mother. Although I kind of like uh, the the one at the in the middle there where it says is Mother Cabrini a saint? No, no. Mother Cabrini's a bitch. How dare you? All right. Is Mother... Oh. Is Mother Day different in the UK? Um, as far as I know, it is... Oh, dude. Forget that one. Look at the fourth one down. Is Mother Day how tax deductible? <laughs> oh, yeah. You cheap bastard. <laughs> what a dick. All right. Is, is Mother Earth the guiding force of creation? Um... To all of my, I guess, pagan friends, maybe, but I'm going to have to go with no. And then they also ask, is Mother Earth in the Bible? Yeah, probably not. All right. (laughs) Is Mother Funders canceled? Or is the mother from Hymim dead? Yeah, (laughs) R.I.P. Okay. What Mother Funders? I don't know. Is Mother Goose a real person? (laughs) Yes. Yes, she actually is. (laughs) Uh, Although it was a moniker that was given to a notorious woman who murdered 13 babies. Yeah, so joke's on you. All right. Is Mother Whore looks good during pregnancy? Um, she's yeah, she, she looks okay. She's so fucking good. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is hey, wait, wait, what was the other there? Is Mother Hubbard Talal? Talal? Uh, I don't is know. Mother Hubbard, I take it, it's like a, a, a brand of something? Or L. Ron Hubbard? I don't know. Okay. Uh, H-I. Is mother-in-law tongue poisonous to cats? <laughs> what? Is mother-in-law tongue poisonous to cats? Is mother-in-law tongue 
poisonous to... I'm, we're reading yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. It definitely is. because It's poisonous to everybody. <laughs> Don't let your mother-in-law <laughs> slip you any time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. Is Mother Jones a reliable source? No, no she is a lying yeah, whore. Yeah, she, she's a bitch. All right. Um, is Mother Callie evil? Uh, no. She's, she's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Is Mother Knows Best a true story? That's... What? It's a false story. All right. Is... His mother is Little Helper. That's um, not even a question. That's, not, that's just a statement. Mother is Little Helper. Mother is law. What is mother that? is law. Right. Is, is mother milk good for husband? Oh, God. No. That doesn't even make sense like in context of grammar, let alone. Is mother milk good for is husband? Is mother milk good for husband? No, it's not. All right. Is mother nature in the Bible? We, we already it. said that one. No. Mother Earth? No. The same thing, no. Right. Is Mother Nature Network credible? Uh, yeah, I, I hear mixed reviews. Networking. All right. Is Mother of Pearl vegan? No. Mother of Pearl is... Mother, Mother of Pearl is the inside of an oyster <laughs> yeah, shell. Yeah, that's, that's not right. Okay. Um, P? Mother, Mo- Mother none, is, none of these are questions. Mother is pregnant with son's baby. Oh, that's, God. That sounds like a Jerry that's Springer. A, that's an Oedipus thing, isn't it? All right. Um, Q. Mother is quotes. That doesn't make sense. Mother is quote. This one's who is Quicksilver's mother on um, that chick that Magneto fucked. Yeah, that's, that's, that's who that is. All right. Um, mother is RH positive. Mother, mother is, is RH negative. Mother is Robin. Uh, is Mother Nature real? People really want to know if Mother Nature is, is a, like real a real thing. thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, this is taking a long is time. Is Mother Son dance necessary? <laughs> so, so, yeah. Some asshole yeah. really doesn't if want to dance with his mom. You see arrested development. It's absolutely necessary. He doesn't want to dance with his mom's wedding. All right. Is Mother Teresa? Yes. Yes. Mother Teresa. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Uh, what are you? Yeah. Is Mother, mother up canceled? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mother up sucked. I never, saw, I, I never saw it. I don't even know what that is. It's a cartoon. Is Mother Vinegar good for you? No, is Mother like, Vinegar bad for you. Is this like Mother Milk? All right. Uh, w. Is Mother worth playing? Yes. Actually, Mother is the Japanese name for Earthbound. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I thought fine. it was probably talking about Mother, the like the song. Oh, no, well, the, oh, the, mate, Mother. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, that was also, I guess, good. But Mother, if you're referring to Earthbound, yes. Great game. Absolutely. Mother. That was the only like actual question we got here. Yeah. All right. X. Who, who is, is Zykor? Who is Zykor mother? Your question is Zykor mother is queen of Shadan yeah. of Siberia. All right, uh, almost done. Who is youngest? Is your mother? Who is youngest mother in the world? I actually know the answer to this. Um, someone got pregnant at two years old. That doesn't even make sense. It's she died during the pregnancy. Well, yeah, I don't know how that works, but yeah. Okay, and finally is. Is Zuko's mother alive? Where is Zuko's mother? Where is Zuko's mother in Avatar The Last Bear Bender? We don't, we don't know. We don't know where... And Z- who is Zeus' mother? We don't know who Zeus' mother is. All right, These fair. people don't know how apostrophes work. No. Who is Zeus' mother? <laughs> All right, well, there you go. That is the Google autofill game. Thanks again to the Super Carlin Brothers for keying us into that one. And mothers, happy Mother's Day. We may once again play this game in another time with something yeah, else. Yeah, throw it in. But- who knows? Every now and then. That took up a good five minutes of air time yeah, for some bullshit, right? Uh, <laughs> his, his mother-in-law is po- <laughs> tongue poisonous to cats. I think that was my favorite, mother-in-law poisonous tongue. Who? Uh, why, that was number one, by the way. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, wh- why was that number one? I don't know. So, is someone, mother-in-law tongue like a type of plant? I don't know, but someone was really, really concerned with if their mother-in-law's tongue A lot poisonous. of people must have been. All right, so moving on, just uh, to talk about some so some big things that um it were in the nerd culture news this week. Uh, ben Affleck has signed on now. He is his role's been upped to he is an executive producer on Justice League now. Okay, so, and and he's confirmed to be directing, writing, directing, and producing and starring in in Batman in his own Batman movie. And there was also with talk- J.K. Simmons as the Commissioner Commish, Gordon, which is awesome. Also, um. Alfred Pennyworth, um, Jeremy Irons is confirmed coming back, and he was awesome, so that's cool. Yeah, I and, liked his Alfred. And I read an article this week about how apparently they, the, there's this is just rumor mill, but someone got a look at the script, the first version of it that Ben has done with Chris Terrier or whoever, and apparently it's like the they call they called it quote the ultimate Batman story. They said that there was like a shit ton of villains in it, like a lot of nice. some some of them were cameos, like something like along the lines of maybe like just. Going to interrogate someone at the Iceberg Lounge and Penguin's there, mm-hmm. as opposed to any of the, like anyone necessarily having to be like the big mean villain. Um, well, so long as they leave out Fish Mooney, because oh, we have no oh, need God. for her. Or Polka Dot Man. 
Polka dot man. Look into your obscure Batman. Good Lord. You'll find him. I am still banking on praying to the Lord in heaven, the, the nerd Lord, for a Leonardo DiCaprio Riddler, though. Oh, that'd be sweet. That'd be so cool. Like, we've been I'd talking be, about this episode one. We still would be still Yeah, going. I'd be down with that. Uh, also, to see him go toe to toe with Ben Affleck would be sweet. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That gravitas there. Gravitas. And then, and then, well, then we gotta get Matt Damon in there somewhere, so. Cause, Matt Damon know, will play Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. And John Boyega. Get, <laughs> oh, yeah, John get our man, John, John Boyega. Our, our main man, John Boyega, Wait, in there. Who would he play? He could play um, Robin. Yeah, I suppose. Terry Kelly. I was trying to think of a, a character from the Batman universe that is traditionally black. And British? Uh, I don't which know. I don't care. I mean, well, no, he can do an American accent just fine. That's true. But, like, obviously, I don't care if you swap out a character for a black actor. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of the Batman universe. They're all white guys almost exclusively. Um, yeah, I'd have to. Well, Lucius Fox and then Batwing, Lucius' son. Oh, so that, he could play. Work. Actually, that'd be cool if he played Batwing. Yeah, that'd be the cool. Little Fox. I'd be down with that. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Okay. Um, okay, hey, so uh, the other thing I was going to ask you about before we kind of move on is, so that was the big news for me, in my opinion. Was mm -hmm. there anything big for you or not really? Or? Um, news-wise, well, we got a uh, word that it's confirmed Punisher's getting his own series. John Barenthal killed it as a Punisher yeah. in Daredevil Season 2, so he's getting his own series. John Barenthal, if you guys haven't seen, is uh, he played Shane on The Walking Dead. He's a great actor, and he really, really is able to demonstrate that range when he played the Punisher in Daredevil Season 2. So I'm very excited to see what he does. Um, as far as stuff this week, though, <laughs> apart from news, there is a funny little story I want to tell. Uh, two very strange things happened to me this week, real quick. Uh, I, as some of you may know, I drive truck as my day job and while driving truck, I've seen a lot of odd things, but this week I was almost, uh, hit by a bald eagle. Oh God. They're uh, like a full grown adult bald eagle. Gigantic. It's like a pterodactyl. No, he it heard comes... us. He heard us making fun of the eagles yeah, from Lord right. of the Rings. It was pissed. Yeah. It came flying at my truck and the, at the last second it uh, darted upwards. Oh god! But it was like close enough that I could have reached out the window and hit it with a stick or if something. If you would have killed that thing, that's a federal crime. You know? not, not if I hit it with my car. Uh, How can I control that? You're the truck. You're the professional driver, bro. Can I be honest though? If I'd have hit it, because like I, it wouldn't have gone under the tire, it would have hit the windshield and it died. I think I'd want to eat it. I think I, I want to know what a bald I, eagle tastes I like. I bet it's pretty good. And I bet if you eat it, you get all the powers of a full-grown Trump. Yeah, you'd have to like keep the beak though, and then wear like put like tie a string around it, and then wear the beak around your face like a beak. Oh, word! And then I could just call myself like America Man. Yeah, or Beak Face. Beak Face. Yeah, the, the almighty. The, the you know, Amer beak America face. Man sounds like a superhero. Beak Face just sounds like someone that nobody wants to invite to parties. You know, we are on a really hell of a tangent here. All right, what's story? <laughs> oh, no, okay, what's story so, number two? The second thing was the next day I was driving home from the route that I was on that night. Now as Beak Face. As Beak face there was a car in front of me we were coming close to a uh like an exit ramp mm -hmm. obviously the guy driving the car wanted to stay on the road however his passenger side tire on the front tire decided that it wanted to take the exit so the tire and wheel just popped off of his car and went up the ramp <laughs> as the car just started shooting sparks Screw you. and he pulled off on the shoulder Screw you guys i'm going home I was laughing my ass off as I passed by this cartoon tire just running up the ramp by itself. It didn't fall over. It wasn't wobbling. It just rolled up the ramp. That was hilarious. And, and to the guy's credit, he didn't freak out. Right. I just he was just he had this look on his face like, God damn it! No, so th no, that must have happened to him before. Yeah, because that's absolutely like, like, not again. <laughs> I, you I, son I, of a bitch to hire. And someone asked me like, Oh, did that back up traffic? I have to drive that way. I was telling him on the phone, and I was like, No, nah, not that I could tell, unless the tire bounced off something, rolled back down the ramp and into traffic. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Which would have been the most cartoonish shit that's ever happened. Oh God! But take you, that, Hollywood. Yeah, there you go. My my week was really. <laughs> Really bizarre. Oh, God. Well, there you have it, my man. All right, so let's talk about this week's Geek of the Week. Ah, Geek of the Week. So we're looking at you, Mr. Holland. Yeah, so in honor of Civil War being released, there, and we and we all were speculative of how this new Spider-Man would be, and I will be the first to say that from the trailers, I was like, oh, God, no, from after hearing Mr. Holland's voice. But you know what? He... 
Well, take it away, my man. Tell him why he earned his spot as Geek of the Week this week. Tom Holland, if you ever are listening and you hear this episode, you are the definitive Spider-Man. Yeah, you were pretty badass. I, I, you know, people were saying, oh, he's too young. Even Spider-Man in the comic books, is, you know, he seems older than this kid seems. But screw it. Well, you're, you know, you're a great actor, and you killed it as Spider-Man. Yeah, you, you, I will say that my favorite part of the movie, which we're going to talk about in a second... Was still Ant Man because I love Ant Man, but and Paul Rudd is amazing. But second place was certainly Spidey. So well done, Spider Man. Yeah. You the costume looked great. Your the voice actually after the initial like shut the fuck up actually grew on me. And I must say that your line your line with holy shit was <laughs> probably the funniest part of that. Or when he's going toe to toe with Wonder Soldier, grabs his arm, he goes. Is that a, like a bionic arm or a cybernetic yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a robot. That is so cool. You have, you have a, like a metal arm. That's so cool. And was it? And Spider Man was also the one that was like, "Your shield defies gravity." Yeah. Like, doesn't follow the laws of physics. Yeah, it doesn't follow the laws of physics. Like that was pretty good. I feel like Spider Man would be really good at cinema sense. Yeah, I mean, we we can we we can say that obviously a big part of that is is Kevin Feige and then the Russos and the writing staff. But honestly, at the end of the day, you brought it, Tom. Yeah. And we were both very impressed. Well, and cl- we'll talk about that more when we get in. Actually, do we have anything else to talk about, or should we just go right into the main topic? Well, we will be tweeting you your award, and... <laughs> ah, yes. Clap, 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 clap. All right. Clap. Congratulations, Tom. You are this week's geek, 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 it wouldn't be the strong and the geek if we didn't have our, our strong weekly, and the butthole. Our weekly aneurysm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So that uh, kind of brings us up to. Oh, uh, uh, man. We're really right, that, oh, cruising this week. Well, we have a lot to normally, talk about. Normally, we're like 45 minutes in before we get to the main topic. I think it's because we, we kind of cut out all the dick jokes this week. Well, we didn't talk about like Flash or Arrow or anything like that. We normally um, talk about. Actually, I, I guess just my only point to make about the Flash this week was. That I really did enjoy the episode, and um, holy shit, it left us with Barry's in the Speed Force. Oh yeah, dude, how do we not talk about that? Barry goes into the Speed He's Force. In the speed Clearly, force. that shockwave is gonna make Jesse and make her into Jesse quick and turn him into Kid Flash. Impulse. Presumably, Kid we can Flash. call him Kid Flash for now. Yeah. Um, so that cliffhanger, I am really interested to see if are they gonna leave Barry in the Speed Force. I hope for one whole episode. Before they bring him yeah, back. Yeah, what if they brought, what if they, like, they kicked him out for a full season? Or for 20 or like years. Or halfway like, into the next season. Or like 20 years. Like well, they're not going to do, they're not going to kick the show 20 a, years into the future, because then it couldn't match up for no, no, crossover no, no, I, episodes of Arrow. No, I don't mean 20 years in the future. I mean, like, we're going to have to wait 20 seasons of The Flash to get oh, Barry Allen. Oh, yeah, and then Grant Gustin will come back and he'll be like, fat. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, lose his sing- uh, He lost um, his singing voice from smoking cigarettes. His hairline goes back yeah. and he's just like, I'm the Flash. Yeah. <laughs> like, Grant, your life really took a turn. Yeah, man. You were so good in season one and two. Yeah. Like, what the hell happened? No, but um, so that left that cliffhanger I really liked. I enjoyed that episode a lot. I would give that episode an eight and a half out of ten. It was really good. It was very good. Uh, I am hoping that, uh, yeah, that Wally and Jesse don't kind of, like, fuck around like they get their powers yeah. as, as soon as possible. Well, I really thought that they would end the season with Wally West going into a coma and then I hope not. That'd like be, I don't the, have to like like a mirror of you yeah. know the, the the setup for the show. I kind of want to see him wake up from being knocked out on the ground. Well, with the thing super is, speed. the general viewer doesn't know that Wally West is a Flash. You know what I mean? Anyone who watched the Flash cartoon, because that was the that was the. I understand that, but like for instance, a good friend of mine who happens to be named Barry uh, is really into the Flash. This guy's like a redneck who goes hunting. He's not into comic books. He just thinks it's a cool show. So when Wally West turns into the Flash, he's going to get surprised if all by of us. our all of our hunters who follow country culture and are nerds, feel free to tweet the show and tell Ben to fuck off. But okay, Barry, thank you. Anywho, uh, is, his, is his full name Bartholomew? No, I think it's just Barry. Oh, yeah, okay. I think yeah, I think Barry Allen's the only Bartholomew that calls himself Barry. Yeah, again. I don't know many rednecks named Bartholomew. I don't know anyone named Bartholomew yeah. other than Barry Allen. Fair enough. All right, so anyway, that was our, t- our take on Flash. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm excited to I see I don't even how... remember what happened in Arrow this no, week. I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens for these last couple episodes of all of these shows because they have about two more weeks till season finale. Right. And right. then we'll be talking about that and we'll be talking about the season finales and obviously what we think looking ahead to the next seasons yeah. when that time comes. And I know we haven't talked about Game of Thrones at all yet. Um... Jon Snow's alive, which... Holy shit, yeah. No one... 
no one thought was surprised by that. Yeah. Like, like, everyone knew they were bringing Jon Snow back. I was more surprised at the fact that Melisandre turns out she's really old and ugly. Oh. If she takes off her necklace. Remember that from the the end of the first episode? I did not see it. Oh, at the end of the first episode, she's looking in a mirror and she takes her necklace off. And then it shows her again and she's like really old and witch-like. Oh. So like the whole beautiful red is a, witch lady thing is a facade. It's like the Snow White, the evil witch in yeah, Snow White. Yeah, yeah. Where she could kind of change her appearance, that kind of shit. Um, Which, by the way, was her actual appearance that scary old lady or was her actual appearance like a beautiful queen? Well, uh, I recently heard a little theory that uh, Walt Disney was obsessed with beauty and the idea was if you're not attractive you can't be good so in order for her to poison snow white she couldn't come to her looking like the beautiful queen she had to come to her looking like an evil witch an evil bitch yeah and like if you look at all of his movies like if they're ugly they're bad like the the stepsisters ursula yeah yzma and even like even like the beast when when bell first meets the beast like he's evil but, like, as he becomes more person-like and he starts to wear nice clothes and comes hair back, he becomes nicer. No, and finally, when he becomes good, he turns, he he turns into a handsome person. That doesn't, uh, doesn't say anything for Scar, though, because Scar was pretty attractive. And Jeremy Irons! <laughs> and that was my favorite. That Be Prepared was my favorite song. That I, think that was, I think that was far enough in the thing, though, that Walt Disney was no longer... Alive. alive. Yeah, alive. <laughs> so, so we can't really go with that. All right, well, moving on from Disney films to Disney-owned films. Yes, let's talk about let's talk Captain Civil America, War. Civil War. So I actually kept calling it Captain America 3, and everybody was like, dude, it's Civil War. And I was like, oh, it's supposed, it was supposed to be Captain America 3, I guess. It should have just been called Aven- Marvel Civil, Civil War. War. Or Avengers no, 3. No, keep Avengers out of it. Just Marvel Civil War. It's such an iconic storyline which obviously they went really far off of the source material but still like in the comics it's not called captain america civil war no, it was just civil war. it's just civil well, war. yeah it's, and and they're actually well they're working on civil war part two right now so um but yeah so let's hear your take on captain america civil war all right well i know a lot of people are, cr- are going crazy about this movie kevin smith said it's the best comic book movie ever made um uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with them. I liked it a lot, but I also did have a lot of things that uh, stood out to me. I didn't like how shaky the camera was that in God, all of the action that scenes. That goddamn shaky camera. Now, I was a little late to the movie theater, so I ended up having to sit closer to the front. So I was thinking maybe if I see the movie again and I'm sitting further back, it won't be as bad. Because from where I was sitting, it was just like so shaky that I, the choreography looked like it might be great, but I felt drunk. Like, yeah. I couldn't keep track of what was going on. Oh, it, re- it really very much frustrated me because I felt like like I really, really wanted to see and get a good view of what was going on. And I just couldn't really tell, like you were saying, because it was just, the camera was fucking moving the whole, so much. And honestly, it, it felt like, like Cloverfield as mm-hmm. opposed to – I was hoping for – you know, some of those awesome set pieces that we had in Avengers and in The Winter Soldier. And I felt like this one just did not have that because the camera was moving all over the place. At least, thank goodness, that in the big, the, the final big set piece battle between, you know, the, the actual Civil War when that happened, that it was a little bit better for that part. But still, the camera was shaking around quite yeah. a bit. Well, you know, and the thing is, like, you have things, uh, movies and TV shows, like, for instance, Batman v Superman. You have uh, Daredevil. Or you have uh, these fight sequences, which are awesome choreography. It's beautifully done. And you can tell what's and going on. And they're just single camera still shots. Yeah. It's not a bunch of quick edits. Right. It's not a bunch of shaky cam. And I know the idea behind shaky cam, let's be honest, it's so that you can't tell that it's a stunt double, and so you can't catch you know, where there's CGI thrown in, it makes it very difficult for the eye to pick those well, things up. Well, and it's also supposed to create the illusion that you're, like, in the battle because right. you're moving around also. But we don't want that. We're, we know we're, we, we're not fooling anyone. We know we're sitting in a movie theater. Well, and the thing is, when you see a choreographed... Cho- choreographed, sorry. Yeah, a what chore- the hell is choreographed? Yeah, a choreographed. Now, when you see a choreographed fight scene and it's done really well... If it's done with a still camera, it makes you feel like you're someone who's just standing there watching this happen. Yeah, and that's cool. That's real life. That's like, for instance, the 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 fight scene in the first season of Daredevil in the corridor is just one long shot. Mm. The camera pans past them and turns around, but it never edits. It's just right. one long shot. Well, and that's why I mentioned about Batman Superman, the nightmare sequence. That's one big long shot, and it's sweet. And yeah. So, 
I, I am a big fan of long shots. Yeah, as I wasn't a fan of, and I, we mentioned this how it's specifically I can think of one part where the camera literally like looked down and then looked back up, and I didn't like that at all. Yeah. Um, now I, maybe that's because the Ramirez brothers direct differently than the Russo brothers. Oh yeah, I mean, and we obviously if we were know. shooting a movie, it'd be very different. And we obviously know everything about movies, so yeah, clearly. Um, so yeah, that was one thing that I was I wasn't a fan of. To be honest with you, the other thing they always got was um. That gets me. That gets me in almost every Marvel movie is the and oh. Before I continue, we are going to talk about what we liked. Well, yeah, I, we, I figured we would we just like go to start through with the, the timeline com. of the movie. We're just saying like the things off the bat. Um, I Zemo. I was not a fan. I thought there was no. I one. I didn't. I think you agree with me on this. Like, what the hell was his plan? Like, what? I, we understand your plan, bro, but how did that work? Well, here's the thing. Also, it was a real letdown. Like, this whole time, we thought he was going to revive these soldiers, and it was going to be like a huge fucking huge-ass battle, and then, nope. Yeah, that was a, kind of a letdown, although I don't think it was a letdown in the same way that like Iron Man 3 had the Mandarin. Yeah, that, um, that, was, that was depressing. Because they made that into a joke. That was literally them just like whipping out their dicks and being like, look at it, audience, I bet you <laughs> want some of this. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, it was like you were built up for this thing, and then when you came there, he was like, you know what? I don't even give a shit about these people. Right. I did all this just to lure you guys here so I could tear you guys apart. However, his plan completely hinged on the fact that, A, there was a video of Winter Soldier killing Howard and whatever her name, Stark. That he had, a that they, someone would have access to that video that 25, for whatever years, reason, 25 years later. For whatever reason, Zemo knew that that existed. Yeah, wouldn't, and Zemo wasn't that old. Also, like Zemo 25 years, 25 years ago, he would have been like, what, 10 years old? Also, like, he wasn't that old. Also, let's not forget the fact that Zemo happened to know about the Winter Soldier and all these other super soldiers. How? And listen, he wasn't like an upper rankman in freaking Hydra. No. He was just a guy. A Sokovian special forces guy. Yeah. And here's the thing, okay, just, I don't know where the rumor came around that if you have special forces training, you can basically be fucking anything. Like, no, dude, just because you have special forces training does not make you a terrorist mastermind. Every one of his plans went off without a hitch, except that Black Panther stopped him from shooting himself and, in the head. And how was he able to go and do the, uh, the, the psyche val on Winter Soldier? Like, no one, no one background checked him? Like, I feel like getting into government facilities is really, really difficult. There was just a lot of things that it was like, okay... Clearly, the the Russos are really interested on the Civil War part, and this whole aspect of Zemo is just the, – there's no way for them to, to get this all in without just cutting out a lot of the explanation – Right. And making it just the product. Because, the, admittedly, what they were dealing with was the more important part of the movie. The emotion behind the combat. You yeah. know, between Iron Man and, and Cap. And their two teams. And, and yeah, exactly. And building all that universe and introducing new characters that... I mean, this was a great movie to springboard Black Panther. Yeah. To look at what's going to happen with Ant-Man. Because now we know he's, uh, you know, running with the, the outlaw crew uh, yeah. you know, of Captain America and whatnot. Um it did a great job of setting some some of that stuff. Honestly, up. I felt like there was even there's no need for Zemo. I understand there needed to be something that brought them together, but I feel like they could have figured something else out that would have been more like coherent. Because it's not like, oh, th it didn't bring them together at the end. They're still divided. Yeah. So so if we're gonna go through this movie um, instead of just saying like man, break this part and this part and in no kind of chronological order, let's like let's go yeah, through right. the movie. Yeah. So. You start us off. So the movie begins. The, well, the, the opening scene with the crossbones fight, I kind of – I liked it, but I liked that it showed how they're working together and everything and obviously set up the original like – well, like the last straw before the Sokovia Accords. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Um, I was kind of disappointed to see um, another throwaway villain. Yeah, especially because like – it, it was made a big deal beforehand that, that Crossbones, Crossbones is, is in it, yeah. And he's like, actually, Crossbones, he's not just a dude in an elevator. And he lasted the first and, 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah. He, now, I, uh, admittedly, like, he was, he didn't have anything left to live for. All he wanted to do was die killing Captain America. Yeah, which, okay, that was true. He was a man on a mission. Now, one thing I will say about that is that there were, see, again, there seemed to be a lot of really cool choreographed fights, because that was yeah. not a lot of, that was Captain America, Falcon, Black Widow, and uh, Scarlet Witch, right? It was just the four of them, I believe. Did you, say, did you mention Falcon? Yeah. Yeah, then yeah, those four. And three out of those four are straight up fighters. Soldiers, yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, when, it, when we get over to Wanda, she's just fl 
they just have her move her hands around and they yeah. throw some CGI in there. Yeah. But the rest of them, it's all straight up choreographed fight. Yeah. So there was some great action set pieces there, I especially hope... with Black Widow. Oh, I was going to say if you were, you know, if you could see, if you could pay yeah, attention to everything. Was... That was now happening. I would say I thought Falcon. They did a really cool like in this one. His wings were really yeah. Like, used him like a shield. shield used him as weapons. He had a little drone and he yeah, was like, hey, look at it, it's cute. Like, yeah, well, Red Wing, which yeah. in the comic books was his telepathic pet falcon no, the they made whole thing into was cool. a drone in this which was nice i, I tapped my wife during the movie i was like in the comic books he's and she's like shut up and i'm yeah. like no okay <laughs> you should have <laughs> no that was cool um so then it went to vienna to have the oh no wait there was oh. one thing i wanted to say um obviously the explosion that destroyed part of that embassy uh harkens to the 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 moment in the uh, in the graphic novel where Nitro blows up and that's what causes the jumping point off. Except the difference is this one was a little underwhelming because she blew up like an, uh, a, an a, office. Uh, yeah, basically the like, size of like a couple offices. Yeah. Like, uh, the, which, the employee, admittedly, they blew up the employee lounge. Yeah, they, they killed some people, sure. But when Nitro... But workers, when... So. I think the character's name is Nitro. When Nitro goes off in the comic books, like, his power is that he freaking goes atomic. So he's, and so he's, he's, he's Captain Adam. He nuclear bombs... And, but yeah, but he doesn't come back. Yeah, that's true. He's just dead, um, and it kills like hundreds of people. And so the United States, and that happens on U.S. soil. So the United States is like they need to be reined in. Right. Period. Period. So this was, I think, smaller. So p- there was still some wiggle room mm-hmm. uh, from the government side of things, which admittedly made for some interesting stuff later on. Um, I just thought it was an interesting you know, right. back and forth. It was a little less high stakes than it was in the. In the comic. Yeah. So from there, um, they go back to Avengers Tower or whatever, um, their Avengers base. Thaddeus Ross comes back reprising yeah, his well, role. Thunderbolt um, Thunder- is now the Secretary of State. I, yeah, I was kind of hoping he was or actually... Or was it the gonna, Secretary of Defense? Secretary of Defense. I was hoping that he was actually going to turn out to be kind of like evil and be the villain, because he ultimately becomes Red Hulk in the comics. Right. I was hoping that he would be the villain. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. I was hoping he'd be the villain, but he turned out to be another kind of throwaway character. Like, pop in every now and then, make a few comments about how he hates Captain America, and then disappear. Um, but I did like... That scene. I did like that where they were like going over and you know what Wanda was obviously very upset by the Sokovia stuff and then Captain's like, That's enough. He like and you can just tell like I don't know, I fucking love Captain America. Yeah. And you could tell that he like he he really was juggling with the I know this looks really bad what you're showing us, but in war, there's collateral damage. Mm-hmm. And that's Captain America is a soldier. He know, well, that's the most obvious statement I've ever made. Yeah. But he's aware that you can't, you know, you can't always save everyone. And I think that's something he even mentioned. Like, right. Well, here's one of the things that I thought was great and a little annoying at the same time. Like, it was a, a double-edged sword for me. So, like, the scene where the woman is talking to Tony Stark... She oh, that was him. stupid. She says, well, no, that's straight out of the comic book. Oh, I thought that was stupid. It's like literally the exact same woman comes up to him and blames him and people like him for the death of her Oh, because I felt like that came out of nowhere. And I don't no, like that, yeah, that's straight out of the comic book. And you know, if you think about it, the amount of guilt that he has to deal with, hands off, or hats off to Robert Downey Jr. Because he really played it well. You could see in his face the, the turmoil of, I made Ultron. So yeah. everything that happened was my fault. Yeah. And he admits it in the movie. He's like, I'm in Ultron. That was my bad. Like, he says it. Now, that being said, though, when they have that meeting and they're all sitting around the table and he's saying, you know, we've really screwed up. We've made some big mistakes. We need some government oversight. I was really surprised no one looks at me and goes, no, you screwed up. Yeah. That, that, everything was your fault in this, in this instance. Uh, now, obviously, you know, what happens in Avenger 1, what happened... Uh, in Captain America Winter Soldier. No one can blame any of that on Yeah, Stark. yeah, no, of course not. But as far as Avengers 2 is concerned, Stark was the bad guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He I, was the villain. Yeah, uh, well, Ultron, but yeah, it was his fault, yeah. Yeah, well, he was the villain's daddy. Yeah, that's true. He was the Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, I... No, he, he would have been the Emperor. The Emperor? Uh, I think so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I... So, I did not... I don't know. I just felt like that kind of popped out of nowhere. So I didn't know that was from the graphic novel. So that makes it, but still, it just, to me, seemed like like Iron Man's like, oh, this one woman told me, hey, you killed my son. And now he's like, I have to stand up for this one kid. And he brought it up in the discussion with them, like like naming the kid by name. I was surprised that like that really affected the other. They would have been like, 
sorry, people die. They're casualties. Um, aliens fucking attacked New York City. You expect yeah. everybody to make it out of alive? I, th- I think if you knew that you were the cause of death, I think they say, like, the actual death toll for Sokovia is, like, 175 people, something like that. If you knew that you something you did caused that many deaths, and then someone came up to you and showed you a picture of, like, their son. Yeah, one of the kids that That's died true. there. That's like, true. that would really mess you up. Yeah, that'd be upsetting. And you would want to do anything you could to change it. That's one thing I will say. I was glad, and I was I was really afraid from the first trailer that came out, that they were just going to make Tony out to be a bad guy. Right. And some people are saying, like, he's the antagonist of this movie more than Zemo is. And I'm like, that's not true, though. Because he's not wrong. He's just not necessarily going about it the right way. Right. It, much in the same way that in the comic books. He's not wrong. He's doing the will of the people. It's just he's also going about it in a way that's kind of messed up. Yeah. Well, it's so... I, you know, I don't like Iron Man. Yeah, so I, I you hate Iron Man. Yeah, I don't like Iron Man, so I, I kind of was booing Iron Man the whole time. But I can agree with you that I think that his intentions are good. Like, at his core, I want to punch Tony Stark in the face. But Robert Downey Jr. or? Tony Stark, Tony Stark. Okay. Robert Downey is fine. But I, but I understand that he's, deep down, he's not a bad guy. Um, so moving on, then we got our, they went to the Sokovia Accords and whatever, and we got... T'Challa and T'Chaka from Wakanda. We got to see and finally meet Black Panther. And I think, hats off, Chadwick Boseman. Good job. I liked Black Panther a lot. Yeah. The only thing that I, it always, that just about the Marvel Cinematic Universe always pisses me off is Black Panther shows up. He's doing a great job being mysterious, attempting murder. And the first thing he does is reveal his secret identity. And in yeah. the movie, I leaned over to my friend and was like, there's no fucking secret identities. <laughs> like, why would he give that away? He's surrounded by the guards. Only he person, just tried to murder a person. The only person in the Marvel Universe who is insistent on keeping their secret identity is Spider-Man. Is Spider-Man. Who, ironically, in the Civil War graphic novel, himself. unmasks himself. himself. Yeah. So, um, I, but but I, Black you know, Panther was cool. As far, yeah, as far as his that's concerned. suit looks so cool. It looks super badass. It looks so If you saw cool. that guy coming to Towards you and it, it's terrifying. Not even in an alley, anywhere. Yeah. Like I can't wait to see people cosplaying as Black Panther. Uh, now th- that also being said, how great was that scene though when they're getting together and the embassy gets blown up during the Sokovia Accords? Yeah. That was and intense. they they cut out the audio. It's just him holding his dad. Yeah. And you see him mouthing uh, "Baba" was the or word whatever. that they use yeah, for yeah. father. Yeah. It was um, intense. Yeah. D- damn near brought a tear to my eye. It was eye. intense. That was yeah. a great scene. Yeah. R.I.P. to Chaka. And we, I really, I thought Chadwick Boseman's accent sounded really cool. It sounded very authentic. Yeah, he's from, like, South Carolina. Yeah, he's a, he's American, yeah. Which, I, at first I was like, well, why wouldn't they hire an African actor? You know what I mean? Because there are good South African actors and, and other, right. you know. But There's that good means, actors in all the whole continent of well, Africa. Well, yeah, but I mean, when I, I, I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of South African actors. Yeah, I'm not, gotcha. I don't know a lot of Kenyan actors. No, I'm whatever. sure there are plenty. But, but in any case, uh. But that being said, he killed it. Yeah, he did really well. Um, so that was cool. That whole chase scene um, where Black Panther's chasing the Winter Soldier, I thought that was really cool. Oh, yeah, cool. and they're booking it on feet yeah. faster than the He's cars are driving. So fast. Because they're yeah. all basically super soldiers. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I don't know. Black Panther, does he have, like, magic powers or something? Uh, or? In, in some... Is it just the suit, or...? Well, there's there's some ideas that he has, like, some spiritual... Like the spirit of the Black Panther yeah, helps some him. kind of, like, That's spiritual powers. That's what I was powers. thinking. Like, kind of like Vixen from um, DC. Not, not exactly the same, though. I think it's just more, like, kind of implied that they have, like... Right. That, and they have crazy advanced technology. Right. Um, so, like... It could be said that, From like, their vibranium. the vibranium suit allows them to run really fast. I don't know how exactly they would want to explain it. Um, but I, I can't wait to see more right. Black Panther, yeah, especially with too. that little teaser we got showing yeah. the, the showing Wakanda. Yeah, that was cool. <clears throat> so then, basically, um, they they get Bucky. They go on the run. They're being hunted down. They Sharon Carter, who had a much bigger role, Age in this of thirteen. One, age of thirteen. She tipped him off about what was going on, um, and they find out about Zemo and his nonsense and. Boo, Zemo. Yeah. As another little Easter egg, the uh, at the eulogy that Sharon Carter gives at uh, Peggy Carter's funeral, which was another really emotionally charged scene. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you see 
Cap's face as he's yeah, he was one really of the pallbearers. He was really upset. Again, good job, Chris Evans. Yeah. I don't know what they had to squirt in your eyes for that one, but you looked like you were really upset. Yeah, and you know what? I He's just gotten progressively for me better. He's a, he's a good movie. actor. He's a he's great a actor, good actor. And I think he really just becomes more and more just the perfect Steve yeah. Rogers. But one of the things that she said, the, the part where she's talking and it's clearly like directed right at him like and what he's dealing with at that moment about how you know you need to stand up for something you got to fight for what you believe in that type of thing <clears throat> that quote is actually ripped right off the page mm-hmm. from what cap says to spider-man uh when he when spider-man in the comic book when he changes sides from tony stark to captain america uh wow. during the civil war so i found it interesting that they they went ahead with like Ripping the quote right off the page. That, that's, and I always, you know, you know me, I love when they do that. I don't read the Marvel books, but I always, I like that they take that from the source material. That's pretty cool. Um, and just a side note, um, Sharon Carter, you want to ever hit us up, huh? Be my guest. <laughs> you are come, one. Come on the show. You are one pretty young lady. Come on the show. We would be glad to have you and ask well, you all for that Well, ma- for that matter, uh, Black Widow, if you ever need to oh, pop yeah, in yeah, for an true. episode. You know what, actually, but you know, but the, our semi flirtatious comments aside, um, any member of the cast of that movie, <laughs> if you want to be on our show. Chadwick Boseman, if you want to be on our show. Tom Holland. You and John Boyd Chris Evans. Could, could come on here and talk about, I don't know, anything. I feel like you guys would get along great. Yeah, that'd be, in your in your, in your your accents of each other. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you could do whatever. You're great accents, so. Um, I'd love to see a sketch where, like, he plays Finn and John Boyega plays Black, Black Panther. Panther. That'd be cool. So, um, anyway, continuing in the chronology of the movie, so then they find out about Zemo's plan, blah, 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 that nonsense. They decide we need to stop these super soldiers, so they build their team, and Iron Man gets the word, so we're going to need, so they recruit his team, and this is where we get introduced to Peter Parker. Well, and and this is where we also start dealing with a little, we start going into plot hole territory. So, plot hole. General Ross, or Secretary Ross, gives Tony Stark 36 hours to bring Cap in. Yep. So, and that's in Germany. Yep. So Tony Stark flies from Germany to New York City, recruits Peter Parker. Takes him back to Germany. Builds him a suit. Goes back to Goes Germany. back to Germany. Deals with all of that. Goes to Moscow. All of that in the span of 36 hours? No, he didn't. Yeah, well, that we're, doesn't make on. any sense. Uh, we, that's true. And I and that kind of stuff is always... It would have taken him 36 hours just to make the suit. Yeah, I, yeah, that's true. And it is kind of frustrating. And how did he know Peter Parker was Spider-Man? I, I, that, all of that, I don't know. But let's just let's talk about that. Pete, so we get introduced to Peter, and... We, we saw some, like, YouTube footage of him, which is exactly what would happen in real life if there was a real Spider-Man, yep. which was cool. But I like the fact that they didn't give, like, long explanations about – it was just, like, understood that, no, we all know that Peter Parker's a genius, so it makes sense he built his web canisters. Like, we get it. Um, Marissa Tomei is Aunt May, so a much younger Aunt May, but that was kind of funny, Tony Stark, like, hitting on her. Yeah, she was um, great. Well, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Marissa Tomei played in a – like romantic drama or romantic oh, comedy, that. something okay. like that. Um, I think in the nineties. Gotcha. I'm gonna but, look that up while um, you keep. But talking. yeah, we talked about our geek of the week, so we don't have to go into Tom Holland again. You did a great job as Spider Man. You were really funny. Um, but then on the other side, on Cap's team, we got to they brought in Ant Man and they brought in um, Hawkeye again. But I must say, what was really disappointing for me was that I just I love Ant Man, and every single time he was on screen, he I was he was cracking me up. But I just wanted more Ant Man. I wanted more Paul Rudd doing and talking about anything, just making jokes. I thought that would have been fantastic. They were in Only You. Oh God. Our Downey Jr. and Marissa Tomei. Boo, Only You. <laughs> Ninety four. No, oh, wow. No. Look how young they were. They were really it's young. crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? You, got, you threw me off track. You were saying how much you love Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yeah. And we got to see Giant Man. So when they got into their huge battle. That was good. How funny was that when he got big and he was like, whoa. Yeah, but the one thing that, that pissed me off about that, though, this was another one of my cons. Why was he walking in slow motion? Go back and watch that. Giant Man, everything he does, it was like an old Godzilla movie. Like yeah. In real life, no. Just because he's big, doesn't he moves just the same right. just because he's big. He was purposely going really, really well, slow. I, I think we have this... I, well, you know, the thing about that, though, is you got to imagine how much distance his hand is traveling. So let's say that you you can move your hand back and forth at, I don't know, 75 miles an hour, right? 
that's fine if you're going from here to here. But if you're going from here to over here, and to those people who aren't looking, I made my hand spread bigger. <laughs> no, one um, is lo- no one is looking besides me. Yeah. Okay, so basically... If he can move his body at a, roughly the same speed that he normally moves his body, but he has to move it fifty times more distance, it's going to seem like he's moving in slow motion. No, I don't. I, I guess maybe with physics that makes sense, but it just was frustrating to me because I was like, it looked like he was like moving like like really slow, like like I like I mentioned, like I got, I got you, I and got it was you. and it was just frustrating for me because I was like, you know, Megazords don't move that slow in Power Rangers. Um, and when Adam just grew super big and. Legends, he was moving regular. Yeah. Well, and it and it's well, no. In Legends of Tomorrow, it did seem like they were all moving slow. Oh, to me, it looked, it just looked. But I thought maybe that was just like the fight was I don't slow know. motion. I don't know. This but just it, looked but really he, slow. Well, to and, me. and you can't make the same argument, I guess, because when he gets small and he jumps, he jumps like a flea. Yeah. You know, and he covers so much distance. Yeah. So. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And I, that, so that kind of frustrates But I feel like if they made him, like, full speed, he would have been just, like, an unstoppable force. Well, that's... You would have just grabbed everyone in his hands and squished in him my, into diamonds. But in my mind, that's what would happen. Um, I... Also, the other thing I didn't... We didn't mention, but Vision and his sweaters... I did like Vision's sweaters. And I liked the Vision... Uh, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch dynamic. The beginning of their budding romance. And, and like, it was, it was difficult, and it was awkward, and he was... You could tell he was trying really hard, but then that moment when it dawns on her that he's keeping her their prisoner, yeah. and the anger that flashes across her eyes, yeah. and then of course Clint Barton shows up, boo, Hawkeye, <laughs> does the neat trick with the lightning, you know, yeah. field arrows. He breaks free, and then she overrides him and uses his own power against him yeah. because uh, uh, Vision's power, one of his abilities, is that he can make himself incredibly dense. Yeah. He can make himself weigh, t- uh, I don't know, 10,000 tons or whatever. Or nothing. Yeah. Well, that's how he phases through yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So she made him so dense that, like, the earth couldn't even hold him. And he was just colliding, right. careening to the yeah. center of the earth. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty amusing. And then, so back to the big battle, though. I That battle was awesome. Oh, yeah, the airport Every, scene was awesome. And there was a lot less shaky camera in that yeah, and every, than on and, the street level fight. And it did a good job showing, like, showcasing everybody's powers, their different skills. You know, Spider Man got in all his neat quips. Yeah, talking about Empire Strikes Back. And my favorite line was he was like, he was like, Jesus Christ, Tony, how old is this kid? Oh, <laughs> well, you know, the thing about that, though, I was actually just talking to my wife about it earlier today. That line was stupid. And the reason why that line was stupid wasn't because he referenced Empire Strikes Back. That's awesome. The reason that line was stupid was that if he knows that there's an old movie in which they do this, he wouldn't have said, that old movie, you know, Empire Strikes Back, he would have said, you know, like in that old Star Wars movie, people that don't know Star Wars think all Star Wars are just one movie. He called it Empire Strikes Back. He doesn't have to act like he's a teen. He could have been like, hey, let's do that thing that they did in Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody would have known. It's bullcrap. Yeah, well, it's it's written that, you know what it's written. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that whole battle was cool. Um, One thing that I... I wish I wish it would have been a little different. Honestly, don't get me wrong. War Machine's cool and Rhodes is cool, but go all in. I wanted to see one hero oh, die in yeah. this movie. Oh yeah, no, I was really kill mad him. that they didn't kill yeah, anybody I in want, this movie. I wanted one hero to die. I mean, I, I didn't want it to be Rhodes because we saw him go down in the trailer. I, Although that actual scene where he hits the ground yeah, did that not that make your brutal. whole brutal. body shiver? I I honestly was um, I picked I picked the spread for. Steve Rogers not making it out of this movie, so I was wrong. I really thought he wasn't. I thought he I wasn't going to make it. Well, well, because realistically, in Civil War, the comic book, it there is no external oh, force. It's just the struggle between which I Team wanted, Cap and which Team is, Iron Which is Man. what I wanted this movie to be. In then the Civil War aftermath, the death of Captain America, right. it is Hydra... You know, fueling this thing where they kill Steve Rogers off. And when they talked about Zemo being in it, I was like, okay, so clearly they're taking a little bit from Death of Captain America. And then Zemo turned out not to even be Hydra. Right. Just some guy. Yeah. In fact, the first thing you see him do is kill Kill a member of Hydra. He was just some guy. Uh, But the thing about it is I was thinking to myself, okay, they're pulling a little bit from uh, Death of Captain America. So at the end of this, Captain America will die. And either Bucky or Falcon will take up the shield. It would have been... Presumably Bucky. Bucky. Uh, because that's what happens in Death of Captain America. And I was waiting for that. I was excited for it. I wasn't Not because I, I didn't out. want Chris Evans to go, because Continue. I do like him. 
But that being said, I was like, Mix I want to see formula. some Winter Soldier. Mix up the formula. I want to see some metal arm in one hand and shield in another yeah. hand. Which we did get a glimpse of in that final fight. Yeah. But um, and Oh, then, well, then, we'll get to that in a second. Because that was the same red herring that threw us both off. And then he lost his metal arm. Um, okay. So... Well, from there, that's... I mean, that's the next logical plot. So they, they had the awesome fight scene. It was great. And then we lost Spider-Man and Ant-Man. They're all gone. Yeah. For, and... You know what? Tony did the right thing by saying, you're done. Go back. Like, I think he realized, like, I can't screw around on this. This is just a kid. You know, get out of here. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. But then, so Tony follows, he, Tony finds out that they weren't lying. He follows. He goes to the raft. He, to, he, yeah, and then he follows, and then he follows Bucky and Cap to uh, wherever well, they well, were. Well, first he goes to the raft. No, no. And we see all the heroes tied up, which that's where it starts to draw on you. Like, uh-oh, maybe Iron Man isn't the good guy here, or maybe he isn't even, like, a little good guy. And that's, that's pulled, again... Right from the comic books. Right. In the comic books, they have the negative zone and the prison set up there. The, fa- the phantom zone? No, the negative zone. I know. I know. I know. Uh, and the whole idea that these prisoners are being held, like, well, basically the way they were in the movie, yeah. you know, without trial or anything. And that's where it's or like, food. oh, it's like, okay, so you want to talk about how we're doing this because of justice. America and justice, yeah. or whatever. But really, it has these. Imp- this imagery of like the concentration in, camps, yeah, like internment yeah. camp stuff like that. So uh, I thought that was great that they brought in the raft, yeah. and it's going to be interesting. Uh, it could be interesting in the future when they start, you know, in these movies they start to actually put a bunch of bad guys in there. Well, the, pre- we the presumption get, the presumption was there were bad guys in there. Yeah, because we could get some like the Marvel version of the suicide or the yeah the suicide squad with like the thunderbolts we could get a thunderbolts movie yeah which would be cool like a big jailbreak type thing right right right. um yeah you're getting a little off topic there but yes that would be kind of this is on topic um that would be kind of but anyway okay so yeah you're right they he gets the info from falcon after revealing like i'm i was wrong right so so he follows them he follows them to siberia and this is where things got a little i didn't like the last part yeah the the train got a little derailed yeah so this so this is where we had some dilemmas so for one um how did did it mention how iron man knew where they were falcon told them oh he told them they're exactly yeah he said like he turns the audio off and he goes i'll tell you but you have to go alone so then um it the big reveal they go they're doing their thing (laughs) He goes alone, but he has scanners and shit. T'Challa was right behind him. Yeah. How did he not spot T'Challa? Yeah, yeah. Black Panther was right there. Maybe and, maybe Black Panther has some awesome stealth technology, but, like, he's Tony fucking Stark. Right, and and so they get there, he he reconciles with them, and then they go in, they're going to stop Zemo, and what happens? All those soldiers are dead. Zemo he put a bullet in all their heads. It turns out Zemo is in Hydra. Zemo's just some dude who's he, obsessed with killing supers, and he doesn't want. And he somehow has this grandmaster plan that turns out wasn't his plan at all, and that really pissed me off. And the thing about Zemo's plan is that it had to work. Perfect. In, in order for it to work, everything had to be perfect. He had to know that Iron Man would be there to get furious, and that Captain America and Winter Soldier would have to be there. Yeah, so the big reveal... And then Cap would have to be there to defend well, the one big, or the other. The big reveal is that Winter Soldier was the one who killed Howard Stark and Tony's mom. He kills their parents Being and, controlled by Hydra, right. obviously. So it turns out Captain America knew this the whole time, which we discovered um, was kind of like a throwaway bit. In, yeah, that was a little... In for those Soldier. of you that thought that that was a plot hole, it actually isn't. It's an Easter egg in Winter Soldier that... Uh, the Russos, you know, having directed Winter Soldier and directed this one, they just pulled it from it without having to, like... So in Winter Soldier, it's like an aside that, oh, Winter Soldier killed all these people, and two of them happened to be the Starks. Yeah, this is one of those things that, like, you'd have to look back into. Yeah, you wouldn't, in hindsight, you're like, oh, okay, but you wouldn't really give a shit about it in the first yeah, time you saw it. It was clever. So Captain America knew, but then Tony Stark goes off the rails and wants to murder Winter Soldier, and... Which- Admittedly, you know, a, if you not watch a video human, of a dude beating your dad to death yeah, it's and not unusual choking out reaction, your mom, yeah. uh, you'd probably want to kill him too. But and wh- what does he say? He killed my mother. Yeah, like, but what got me was that you just mentioned it. Zemo had to know that Iron Man would be there, and he also had to know that that video existed, and, it, and that it, somehow the VHS tape survived that getting, getting shot, shot by Cat Winter Soldier. How, how did he know that there was a video? How did he know that there was such a thing as the Winter Soldier? How did he know that there was this uh, that there were these Super Soldier guys? How did he know that there were code, he, code words that would make them obey you? Well, he had the book, but how did he find out about the book? Yeah, 
He kept interrogating the. Well, he got the book from that guy, right? From the Hydra guy. But yeah. he wasn't Hydra. If he was a Hydra, he kept if he was interrogating these Hyd- the Hydra. If guys, he was a Sokovian Hydra operative, that makes sense. He would have access to this knowledge. But he was just some special, some dude. And again, like the world doesn't know who the Winter Soldier is, or that there is a Winter Soldier. Well, then they revealed he's it. supposed to be secret. Uh, well, on the news, they said the Winter Soldier of Bucky Barnes. You can't, James Buchanan. Yeah, well, but how did they get the name Winter Soldier? Uh, that was what he was known as, in, even in the last one. He was known did as. they? Did it become public knowledge? I apparently, the, apparently, the apparently. Because do you think anyone was like James Bucky Barnes? You mean that dude that died in World War Two? Yeah, who was who specifically on the tour of the of the Captain America Museum yeah. says you the mean one that guy soldier, that the one howling soldier that guy, guy who also was part of Steve Rogers' crew. Wait a minute, are they all still alive and yeah. as young as they were then? Where do I get some? Of yeah, that? absolutely. I think. I think this world, people are just like, he's what? He's super or something? Whatever. No, fuck it. Oh, really? Just no. walk away. And, oh, hold on. Wasn't it really funny how, I forget, what was the word that they used to enhanced or something? What were they used to, because you could tell they really wanted to call them metahumans and they can't. Because that's a oh, right. thing. But you could, I, I, they were calling it I, something. Yeah, I don't like, remember. Like, but there's a word, because I, like, I leaned over and I was like, they want to, you could tell their faces, they want to say metahuman so bad and they can't. <laughs> like, you can't call them superhuman. Yeah. So I thought that was funny. Um, so yeah, we had this big battle, the final um, which we confrontation. Knew, which we knew. Which was fresh. This, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this was, a, sorry to steamroll you there. Uh, I was like, okay, so now the ending is going to be cool because Cap and Tony are going to work together again. And we that kind of started to happen right. when he first came in and he basically apologized for being wrong. But wait. But then I thought, oh, wait a minute. In the trailer, we There's... get that really cool scene where Cap and Tony are beating up on Iron Man. Iron Man and then we get him getting, you know, Cap getting up and saying, I could do this all yes, day. And, that, and, we, and we hadn't seen this yet. And so we were, like, we, were, we were like, thanks, trailer. We know that they're going to fight. Yeah, for sure. Reason. You know, you went, you went and gave us a Batman v Superman. We know that Doom stays out there somewhere. Yeah, we know, we know Doom stays out. <laughs> Something's gonna happen that we already know is gonna. So, happen. so they battle. That was a cool fight scene. It, there was a lot of raw emotion. Yeah, around. Steve, Steve went off, almost smashed his thing. But, uh, Iron Man destroyed the Winter Soldier's arm. Yeah. It, it got, it Iron got, Man did what he did in the comic books, using uh, the computer program to analyze his fight maneuvers yeah. and, and set up a, yeah. a countermeasure. Which was all, that was all really cool. Um, that battle ended with Captain America winning, so I guess it was. It turned out it was a Captain America movie. Uh, <laughs> and, then, away. and then Black Panther spared Zemo. And brought him to justice, and I was like, "Good for you, Black Panther. That's cool." Yeah, I'm and it you. gives us a, a Marvel villain that isn't killed at the end of the movie. Yeah, who probably I hope doesn't ever come back. Just fuck you, Zemo. <laughs> but if you have, if you turn out to be cooler, he might have an it, important role. To it, play. He, if he gets his costume, that'd be cool. His costume, his like, his, his pink man, his his purple and pinkish. the and the, the zebra. Yeah, he's a silly looking. Villain. I think he's and also I want them to start calling him Baron. Like I was hoping it'd be Colonel Zemo is stupid. They call him Baron Zemo. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I, I would have liked it. Uh, but yeah, so the movie and the movie ends with Cap apologizing, going in and busting him out. He pulled a Batman. Captain America pulled yeah. a Batman, busted out his team, and his team is on the run, and that's where it leaves us. So, out of ten, what would you give Captain America: Civil War? Uh, probably about an eight. An eight? Yeah. I would also give it an eight. Yeah. I give it an eight. It's what are not, your... It wasn't a perfect movie. I don't think it was the best Marvel movie, like no. some people are saying. I would rank it. I would rank it above Age of Ultron, but before Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers One, and Winter Soldier. That's probably where I would put it. I would put it. On, I don't. On, I don't. I th- I'd put it on par with Winter Soldier. I think it, for me, it might actually be above Avengers One. Oh, I love Avengers One, but yeah, but Aven- I don't know. This one. Avengers 1, actually most of them, they're, they're very funny. There's a lot of jokes. This one, I felt like they knew that it's a bit more serious of a subject matter. So where you had the jokes, they were just for the that particular character. Like Spider-Man had his jokes in. Ant-Man had his jokes in. Tony had very few jokes because this was a very emotional movie for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? By the way, can I just, again, to reiterate, Ant-Man's scene when he first just with Captain America – I, lit- I know we even saw it in the trailer, but still, it's, I loved it so it's much. Awesome. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Captain America. You're ca- and right. I love the fact that he was the only one in the entire movie who referred to him as Captain America. And he kept doing it every single yeah. time. Like, Captain, like, Captain, I'm, I, yes, I will I will do what I can, Captain America. Yeah, right. like, that was hilarious. Uh, okay, so let's talk. Uh, well, no, the- I was, I would, so I would say, if you had to pick your three best parts of this movie, best things from the movie, just bullet points. Okay. Uh, 
any of the action sequences with Spider-Man in them. To Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. For straight me, up. For me, also, Spider-Man is one. Spider-Man. And he will be back. Yeah. That The, the acting, it was... It was really well acted. Yeah, uh, for me the, the, the for me the standouts were Tom Holland, uh, Chris Evans again, and I think Chadwick Boseman were my standouts. You know, I gotta give it to Robert Downey Jr. Okay, I think he he killed it. I think Chris Evans killed it. I think Tom Holland killed it. Yeah, I think it was just it was a really well acted movie. Yeah. Okay, and, and it didn't feel bloated. And you know what though? And also the other thing I forgot to mention earlier that scene when. We finally got to see Captain get a little smooch smooch, and the two guys are like, Oh, yeah, that was great. Like, yeah, he looks bro. back and they're both yeah. smiling at him. I thought that was funny. Meanwhile, like, when they first show up, he's like, Move your seat. He's like, I yeah. hate you. But they were, they were like, Yeah, man. All right. Uh, anyway, okay, so then and your we third. Have, your third. And your third. Uh, so the acting, Spidey. Um, that we have a movie in this universe that launches other important like plot points like well, now we have black panther right now we have spider-man now we have what's going to like be now we have a, we have a fractured avengers yeah now like we have a lot of different things in play now right which i like that too um i think for me the third thing that i really much enjoyed was uh just getting to see this team grow and work as a team like getting mm-hmm. to see all of these new characters as members of the team without needing this long drawn out thing. Um, now my, my things, my three biggest negatives, I would say. So one shaky, shaky camera Yeah. Two, Um, I did not like how there was a disconnect from this. So this overarching theme that we've been getting since the beginning, since Avengers was Thanos and the infinity stones. And there wasn't any of that whatsoever. And without, the, except for the brief mention of Vision saying he doesn't know how to use his stone. Right. I kind of wanted some in like the mid credit scene or something to connect to that, so that to at least remind us audiences, hey, by the way, still give a shit about these Infinity Stones. Like mm-hmm. it's a thing. And there was none of that, so I kind of was disappointed. And the third thing was just Zemo. Just I hated Zemo. Uh, if I was talking about my negatives, shaky cam, and as far as Zemo's concerned, his plan. I don't think that the acting on Zemo's part or the motivation for the character were bad. In fact. One of the things that I really enjoyed was uh, him listening to the message on his phone from his wife. That was like really. See, I thought that was. I, did, I thought it was dumb. I thought that was really humanizing, right. you know, and it, it and it gave the character because a lot of times in these movies you have people like Malekith from Thor two nonsense or or you could literally name anyone besides Loki. And... Yeah, and and there's no conflict to the villain they're just bad for badness sake yeah where like like loki actually had this thing where troubled relationship with the father finding out that he was actually a frost giant well and he tried to you know in thor one he tried to seemingly betray his father and then betrayed the frost giants to just to make his dad proud of him for a minute and that was he was compelling and that's why i think everybody responded to him really well and i think zemo for you know i mean how, how silly his plan was yeah I think his character had some real emotion behind it. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of people don't like Ultron, but I think for the same... Uh, I, oh, I, say, loved, I loved Ultron. A lot of people don't like Ultron because he's not the Ultron from the comic books. But I like the fact that he was a little bit more damaged. Yeah. He was a bit... Uh, he more had, human. He, had, he was m- way more human. I think James Spader played it awesome. I just like James I love <laughs> James Spader. Yeah, that was just cool. Uh, but in any case, so I, I would give Baron Zemo's plan... Uh, was boo was boo, boo. and then number Take that, three Hollywood. for me, despite how high the stakes were in this movie, at the end of the movie, after the sec there after the mid credit scene, I said, okay, so this movie was just a wash, right? Like we know that they fracture, sure, but at the end of the movie, we have the or like right by the end of the movie, we have this everything is like thrown to the wind. Rhodey is paralyzed. Half the team is sitting in prison. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was an Empire. It was an Empire Strikes Back. Winter Soldiers in the Wind. Well, yeah, but then they're just like, okay, well, Rhodey, he'll walk again because we going to give him these bounty flags. And then uh, Cap's going to break all those people and, out. And now they're saving him in sa- Wakanda. And not save that for another movie. Oh yeah, and uh, Winter Soldier thinks that the best thing for him to do is to go back on because ice. That was they literally just took all those things that like, hey, look, it's going to end in the, and everything's bad. Just Actually, kidding. Just kidding. Just We're going to make it okay they again. Said, they South Parked it. Yeah. And they I was South like, Park. oh, come on. Just end on a bad note. End it tragic. Make people walk out of that movie being like, wow, that one was really heavy. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, that ended okay. But that's not Marvel style, dude. They couldn't, like, like Batman Superman ended on 
Superman's dead, and Batman needs to go out and find the Justice League. It ended on that kind of note. This one, like, that's not Marvel style. I don't know. It's just, like, obviously, like, it still ended in a in a place that's bad. I mean, the team's broken. Rhodey is broken. Yeah, but... but Winter it, Soldier is literally broken. But it, <laughs> it, it, but it ended with Iron Man, you know, like, like, oh, thanks for the letter, Cap. Like, you're wink-wink. Like, everything's gonna be okay. And, and he left uh, the cell phone for yeah, him. We can, be, we can be buddies. So it, it was, like, in, indicative of, like, this pattern in the Marvel movies, which is... Uh, I understand thing, they're trying things. to end them, make them contain stories, but... Well, and you know what? For this one, I would say it's l- the least of a contained story. Sure. If you hadn't seen Winter Soldier or Iron Man, or uh, I mean uh, Avengers 2, you would have no context for this movie whatsoever. whatsoever. Yeah. So I do like that they're they're making them more intertwined. Yeah, of course. Uh, but still in all having... And, th- and I guess that's a problem with a self-contained story. You need to kill off the villain at the end. Yeah. So maybe less of that, Marvel... But I don't know. You you can have an ending that's a little sad, or you can have you can kill a character. Right. No one would be upset if you killed Rhodey. Yeah. Except for nobody would be really that sad if you killed Hawkeye. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe Don Cheadle and that other, well, and yeah. the actor who plays Hawkeye is what's his name again? Uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So uh, yeah, Captain America. I think we both gave it an eight. All right. So oh, um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh. The post credit scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spider-Man? We, we get a, a fun little scene. He got a, a, a couple last quips in, you know, oh, who was it? A guy named Steve. from, And she's like, oh, uh-huh. Steve with the big bike teeth or whatever. He's like, no, you don't know him. He's from Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, and then you should have seen his friend. He was a giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, what, and, what was that supposed to mean that when, like, oh, Tony Stark made me a symbol on the roof? Well, like, a little known thing about Spider-Man is that he has a spider light. That he uses to, like, shine down bad guys and alleys and stuff. It's like a flashlight. Really? So I think that was just kind of like a... A wink to it? Yeah, I can, that, oh, that okay. might have just... Because it, the spider light is, like, right. the, the logo. So that was that was the, the final credit think, scene. Yeah. What was the mid-credit scene again? The, the mid-credit final? scene was Wakanda. That's right. Um, I think that was just a wink to it, but it also showed, like, Spider-Man is now part of the Marvel Universe. We're going to have Spider-Man Homecoming, which should be... Great. In fact, they they did a little drop of that by making Homecoming one of the words. The words. Yeah, I noticed that also. Um, um, which yeah. I can't wait for us to do an episode when Spider Man Homecoming comes yeah, out. Yeah, we'll be. because I cannot wait to have a whole movie of Tom Holland. We're and hopefully it'll be just as good as it was, and I'm sure it will. Be. I mean, we only got him for what ten minutes, so I can't wait to see yeah. uh, a full feature length film movie, with yeah. him in it. So, all right, that's that does it for that talk. So to finish the show out tonight, we will do as we always do, um, and do the Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans! Good lord, that was loud. Yes, it was. So last week we pitted the DC's League of Assassins versus... AC's Brotherhood of Assassins. Very good. Um, this one was a split between us. You went Assassin's Creed guys, mm-hmm. I went um, Rachel Ghoul's boys. And Twitter... Did the, the exact, exact same, same thing. So this one, we don't have a clear-cut winner. Well, this week. we did talk to our other brother. Oh yes, and he aired on the side of Raish. So that was a vote for Raish. So, so, League, so the, yes, I win again. Ha ha. The, the League of Assassins. League of Assassins it? squeaked it out. Yeah. By the skin of their assassin and, teeth. And I think the fact is that. Damian Wayne being the wild card, the access to modern weapons, the access to Lazarus Pits, <laughs> Canary Cries. Although, I will say, I didn't mention the fact that Ezio does have an apple of Eden that allows him to control men's minds. So that would probably... That would have... That, that, he could have taken any number of people by himself if he had it. Ah, fair enough. So You see him wipe out armies with that in the games. Oh, God. Well, in that case... Um, yeah, that's that's hindsight. So sorry. Well, and and that, that's a cop out. Yeah, that's like saying, oh yeah, and then you know, Raish has a, a nuclear bomb or used a, pa- a <laughs> yeah. pathogen. And kill yeah. Him. So League of Assassins, congratulations. All right. So this week we've been doing a lot of um, male characters in our previous Clash of the Tights. So this week we decided to take an alternate route and go with a battle of the ladies. So in corner one we have we have Merida. From the Disney film Brave, a awesome archer, a trained Scottish Highlander. I don't know. With experience um, combating bears, her father, targets. Yeah, her father is the warlord of the clan. 
Uh, he's like the king of the, all the clans or whatever. Right. So you know that she's had some close combat kind of training. She also like, has exposure to magic, so she's she, the will of the wisps or whatever. Yeah, the will of wisps. Yeah, and so uh, she can she can't use magic herself, but she's aware of it. And oh, and maybe she could call on her witch friend to make her some gammy spells. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, we do see her T bone like or uh, bullseye like three bolt targets like while moving while moving in like six seconds and she also has quite i think a big thing for her also is her personality she's very headstrong um strong-willed and she's just, real tough she'd make a great green lantern yeah she would get a yeah, good green would. lantern ring for her to match her dress um so yeah that's in corner one in corner two our other disney princess of the of the evening Fa Mulan. Fa Mulan. So Mulan um, comes from the feudal Chinese kind of um, era. She has a trained soldier in the Chinese armor to fight the Huns. Mm-hmm. Um, she's good with a, bu- a bow and a sword. Um, also shooting fireworks and starting avalanches. Yeah, she can. She can rock a rocket. Pretty yeah, good. she has a dragon companion, Mushu, um, who Eddie Murphy <laughs> played by Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy, who is I also love- not Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. She has a lucky cricket and that cool horse. So she has some animal companions. Yeah, she does. She um, got some animal husbandry. Yeah, and she was able to beat, presumably, the Han leader. So. Uh, Shang Soon? No, his name? Shang Soon is from Mortal Kombat. Is that Mortal Kombat? Uh, oh, yeah. The Sha- Ruthless Shan Yu. Shan Yu. Shan Yu. Well, another another big thing about Mulan is that she thinks outside the box. She does. We see that a lot She's in the very movie. very smart, yeah. She is, like, she knows how to, or she finds a way to overcome whatever obstacles in her right. path. So, how do you see this battle going? Well, you know, I was talking to our... our other brother David Mm -hmm. and I asked him his opinion on it and he said Merida all the way I said what do you mean he goes he's gonna she's gonna kill her every time before she can even get close like she's always gonna hit her with an arrow Mm -hmm. she can't miss okay so so is that your opinion also I don't think so because we see Mulan deflect an arrow with her sword in the movie exactly yeah she has good training there and I feel like if she can close the distance, I mean, again, in the movie, we see her come up with a solution for every problem she deals with. Right. Whether it's using the, the weights to climb to, the pole. To shimmy up, yeah. Or using the sash to climb the pole at the moon, at the guard yeah. palace. Or using the fireworks to start a, the cannon to start an avalanche. Using the fan to disarm Sean Yu. Yeah. Like, she always has a, a, a way of overcoming an obstacle. And we, she also has extensive close quarters combat training, which we see in that big, long sequence with that awesome song. Also, as opposed to Merida, she is wearing armor. That is true. Merida does not wear any that armor. Arm, that armor could probably take an arrow or two. Maybe. But then again, Merida's accuracy, she'll put one in her eyeball. That's true. She'll put one in her in the joints of her arm. But if Mulan shoots an app well I guess they're in the arena but if she shoots her with a cannon if she has her cannon right if she has her cannon I don't know if that's gonna be able to be dodged as easily I'm going Mulan I think everything you just said gives credence for me for Mulan yeah I I, which which is hard to say because Merida doesn't have any other weapon besides the bow right if Mulan gets close enough she whips out her sword well you know we do see Merida at one point holding an axe okay so then we'll give her that we'll give her the axe but still Mulan I think would be quicker with the sword yeah. And also, if she whips out her little dragon and has him do a fire blast. Well, this is one-on-one. Okay. Well, We're not going to give Merida her three little bear brothers. Oh, her little and... bear brothers, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go Mulan. I think the close quarters of combat, the intelligence and kind of um, spontaneity that you were mentioning, I think gives her the advantage in this one. So for me, win Mulan. I think, I think so, too. Well, yeah, we'll put that out on Twitter and see what you guys... Uh, think at home. So for us, it's Mulan. For us, it's Mulan. But we've been wrong before. So that's our show for the evening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, or on iTunes, whichever you prefer to listen. Um, you can follow us on, on Twitter at Strong and Geek. You can follow me personally at the Ben Ramirez, and you can follow Josh at Ramres for Prez. Feel free to tweet us all your favorite questions, comments, concerns, ideas for the show. And as always, 
D- D- pictures of Richard. D- direct messages of your direct message. So that's the show for the evening. Join us next week when we'll be talking about more of your favorite geek more, things. More fucking things. More of your favorite <laughs> geek culture, nerd culture, and pop culture on The Strong and the Geek. Strong and the Geek! Chicka chicka! Oh yeah! Thanks for staying tuned for our post credit scene. I'm Peter Parker. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>